always like to have a few drinks before I get on stage, just to take the edge off the cocaine I've been snorting in the back room there about 15 minutes ago, which I only do to pick myself up because uh, I've been pulling canes all afternoon. <laughs> A bit like you, relax there. Which I need you to calm down and relax because I can't get any more methadone until Monday morning. <laughs> Michael McNenny, mark my words, uh, arthritis. Which one are you? I was Michael McNeeny before I started doing comedy. Then I decided to have, because because the surname McNeeny's always been misspelled and mispronounced. I, I wanted to have a um, a, uh, a different stage name, and I quite like the the funny stage name. And it's also a bit of a tribute to people that uh, got me very interested in comedy in the first place, or interested in the art of making other people laugh for entertainment, which is the Marx Brothers. So uh, I came up with the name Mark My Words, and uh, which suited me because I'm a very wordy type comic, very verbal wordplay type comic. Uh, I had that name for 15 years, turned 40 a month or so ago and decided I was going to change my name, uh, change my stage name, which I changed to Arthritis. Once again, I play on words uh, or names and um, uh, I'm embracing the, the fact that I'm, you know, middle age and, and getting older and there's a lot of people in the audience who are my age and, and I do material that you know relates to them. that's part of the art of stand up comedy is to relate to the people you're talking to and uh, you know I'm quite happy to do that I don't want to be a, a middle aged guy trying to pretend he's still young and hip and, and, and you know dressing young and hip and trying to talk about the things that you know you've done as a teenager and you know I want to embrace the you know, the older audience. So who gets more work? Mark my words or arthritis? Arthritis has never done a bad gig. <laughs> Mark my words got more work. What made you get into comedy? I was sort of in a loose end because I, at the end of the 80s, uh, a lot of my friends that I hung around with either uh, drifted off into serious relationships or got married or some OD'd from drugs, others ended up in jail, others were still alive but you know never got into the hard drugs and uh, I was a bit of a loss and um, around the time my brother who'd been a horse trainer for a few years had bought his own property in Bathurst at the back of the Bathurst Mountains in a place called Perthful and he just got married himself and had uh, a kid and he needed he couldn't afford to pay someone to labour for him so I went up there just as a labour just to help him out with the property and the horses and assist him in horse training but I actually grew to like it and uh, got my harness racing drivers trainers license it's one the same pretty much I liked it so much that um, I actually had a goal to become the best harness racing driver in Australia there's, there's very few professional drivers most of them are trainer drivers because it's, it's not a, a sport with a lot of money you know the, you do have people making a lot of money at the, they're at the top but for the most part the people who drive the horses in the races are the same people who train them. There's not a lot of groupies that hang around harness racing no, though, no, is there? There's a lot of flies. Not quite the princesses that go to the, uh, <laughs> the other track. No, no. So anyway, uh, I'd done that for a couple of years and after a bit of a dispute, a disagreement with my brother, I, I come back to see and um, I didn't know what to do but I, I had been writing for a few years like writing little short stories, poems, song lyrics and, um, and they sort of become more humorous the more I'd done it. They, they weren't sort of, it wasn't personal stuff, it was like me trying to entertain someone who was reading it and uh, this is what turned into uh, comedy material. I had a lot of comedy material before I started. I, I didn't actually even know there was um, comedy clubs around. I, I started by going into a contest at the Sutherland United Servicemen's Club, a talent quest, where I was the only comedian. And then uh, another talent quest at the Alawa Hotel. How did you go on those? I, can't be, I got into the semi-finals, but I was competing against very beautiful girls singing not so good songs, but they were very beautiful girls. And, did you uh, not think of dressing up as a beautiful girl? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I, actually, around that time, before I found out there was comedy clubs, I was also... Um, my mate had a punk band and he was doing a lot of parties at the time and I'd do my stuff that I'd written, uh, my 
comedy material in between the sets of their bands, which was quite dangerous because I used to get beer cans thrown at my head regularly. And uh, sometimes there'd be guys at the parties that I'd years before had a fight with, and they were I'm sure they were the ones throwing the beer cans. And, and anyway, I, I seen an ad for a comedy club in Sydney in, in the newspaper and uh, went there, and then they told me about another club that done uh, full time stand up comedy and then got um, contacts and, and gigs through that. Sometimes I'll, uh, I'll take a girl out to a restaurant and to impress her, I'll order in French. Doesn't impress the Japanese waiters. <laughs> you know the problem with dating now? It's, it's too quick. They're, they're trying to speed things up. You can't get to know anyone anymore. Like that speed dating, you know? You've got to keep moving around. Hi, my name's Mark. Do you want a route? No, okay. Hi, my name's Mark. Do you want a route? Hi, my name's Mark. Do you want a route? Hang on, mate. I'll just keep trying the women. Hi, my name's Mark. Do you keep moving around? You want to get around? I wouldn't have to go through that sort of nonsense. If I'd have been smart, kept my mouth shut, not back chat of a girlfriend. Before she left, she said to me, you don't listen to me. You only hear what you want to hear. So I said, yeah, sure, I have another beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, I went into one of those bras and things stores the other day, and this woman came over and said, do you want to look at the bras? And I said, no, I want to look at the things. <laughs> Coming up, we take a look at a not so new town and challenge Arthur to a three way pool cop. I reckon that Howard could have won the election. He lost it with the debate. If he had just come out of that debate and just said, Hi, I'm John Howard. If you're easily led, not too bright, a deal, a drongo, a dingbat, a dildo, a dodo, a dolt, a dunk off. If you're dumb as dog shit, dim witted, simple minded, a bit of a slow coach. If you're an imbecile, if you're a head case, if you're brain dead, a jughead, a deadhead, a dickhead. If you're light headed, muddle headed, if you're a numb skull, if you're numb nuts, a real nut job, a cretin, a boob, a bloody idiot, a complete nut, a moron, a pea brain, a bird brain, got shit. For brains, if you're a silly billy, a stooge, you've got a few screws loose. If the lights are on but no one's home, you're a few sandwiches short of a picnic, you're not the full quick. You're a fuck knuckle, a knucklehead, a nickweed, a nick and poop, a nickrod, a nick nong, a ninny, a noodle head. If your name happens to be Nesbitt, Norbert, Norville, Nigel, Norman, Neville, or Norell, vote for me in the election. <laughs> Exactly. Well, we're in Newtown. It's the uh, Camperdown side of Newtown. It's the, the wild back streets. This is the rough side, isn't it? <laughs> no, not at all. It's all been gentrified. There is some parts that are still housing commission and... Uh, Do you go to those parts? No, no, I don't dare. Yeah, what, what could be called, you know, the old school knockabout areas. Because this was a very, uh, you know, a very knockabout, loudy area back in the day. Uh, it's been gentrified and uh, renovated to the hilt. Well, there's a lot of great looking places around here, terrace houses that can't be touched because of the heritage listing, but uh, yeah, there's the Nouveau Rich have moved in, but it's still full of your your, your uh, punks and your goths and your emos and your anarchists and gays and lesbians. Living the dream. The rule of thumb here is that you can go out dressed as weird as you like and you're still going to see someone down the street weirder than you. Are they going to say you can dress as weird as you like and you still fit in? If you were the weirdest dressed person you could possibly imagine you're going to walk down the street and still see someone and go, wow, <laughs> that person's weird. Do they try and outdo each other, you think? Do you think it's part of the culture? I think it's like a, a mixing pot of, of people who don't fit in anywhere else in Sydney and possibly Australia, because obviously people hear about to move here to Sydney because they don't fit in their own country towns or, or capital cities in other parts of the country. And of course the uni's here, the big Sydney University, the first university in Australia. and. Um, that's a big part of the, the new town feel. You know, a lot of the restaurants and cafes, you know, uh, catered to the the students. You know, half price and uh, cheaper meals. You didn't grow up here, though, did you? No, I'm a I'm a Cronulla boy actually. I uh, that was a lot better area back when I was growing up because it, it wasn't called the Shire. It wasn't this wanky name for a place that's supposed to be where everyone wants to live. It was just a really good beach 
area that uh, was, you know, very laid back and and pretty much mostly working class and and you know just. There was a rough side to it, though, wasn't it? Yeah, well, any place really that's got a pub and is working class is going to have a rough side to it. Did you hang around the rough side? Might have been a few fights. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was before the days of you know. Um, Weapons. No, no. <laughs> before the days of you know uh, responsible drinking laws and and all that sort of stuff. But uh, no, I was, I was pretty much a teenager of the 80s. I actually didn't fit in. in I, I loved going to the beach and I used the beach as much as I could. But uh, I used to come to the city a lot. I used to come here to Newtown and see bands because I was into punk music and ska music and uh, alternative music. So I, I, me and my friends that uh, I had would come into the city and, and places like this and, and see the alternative bands and punk bands rather than be part of the surf culture that was out there. I've been checking myself for uh, testicular cancer every day. But you can do that. You can, you, it only takes 12 minutes. Seven minutes if it's a good DVD. Yeah, I wish this was a joke, but I was actually caught masturbating when I was 16 years old by an auntie. And I got the old, you'll go blind doing that. So I said, I'm just going to do it till I need glasses. And I'm gonna stop. Well, you laugh about it, can't we, mate? The women that I don't touch it, don't even know where it is. I've brushed it once accidentally looking for something. <laughs> I've gone into a pub, gone up to a mate and said, how you going? Literally the first sentence out of his mouth is, all right, now I was a bit toey earlier. I had to knock the top of it before I come down the pub. You never hear a woman talk like that. You never hear a woman say, oh, Daniel never came over last night, so I went to bed on my own and rubbed the jackpot on my instant scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Next shot, I'm going to have to use this. I was also thinking that if the Beatles, instead of being from Liverpool, England in the 60s, come from Liverpool, Sydney in the 60s. <laughs> instead of being John, Paul, George and Ringo, they would have been Wayne, Shane, Warren and Tomo. <laughs> Instead of having a song that goes, it's been a hard day's night, I've been working like a dog, they would have a song that goes, oh, I had a big night last night. <laughs> and we are going to work today. I need the air of a dog. <laughs> I hate the way uh, people walk around with these MP3 players and these iPods thinking, yeah, we're really tech savvy, we're 21st century, we can download music. We were downloading music 20, 30 years ago. You just had to wait for your favourite song to come on your tape deck cassette recorder, <laughs> with one finger on play and the other on record, and press it at the same time when the song started. And then stop it before the trick started talking again. So you didn't have to rewind it back and forth. We downloaded music. Still to come, the funniest joke he never wrote, and we chat about a life of crime. Anyone ask me for a spare smoke, I say, yeah, I've got a spare smoke. It's in the boot of my car with my spare tire. If I get a flat, I'm going to smoke it to relax and calm down before changing it, or as a reward afterwards. It's my choice. It's my spare smoke. Or well, people who want to pinch your smokes, can I pinch one of your smokes? No, they're ticklish. I smoke all my 25s. Sometimes I get uh, friends come over, they knock on the door, and you're like, who's there? You're back at me. You're back at Cartby, me. I'm in here. It must be you. You've confused yourself with me again. And they go home and think about it. And people once knock on the door. They said that for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. So I said, could come back later in the day when I'm here. That's what I like to hear about Jesus. I mean, anyone who walks around saying they're born again should have to wear nappies for the first two years.
What's your favourite true crime story? There's a guy called Richard Marks, they call him Mr Nice, which is also the title of his autobiography. And he was a uh, major international marijuana smuggler, importer, exporter, whatever you want to call him. Ingenious guy, he, uh, he was Welsh born I think and educated at Oxford. Um, and uh, basically smuggled marijuana around the world. Your biggest ambition in life? Would have to be to see all the countries that I want to see in the world. I don't want to see them all. Some of them I couldn't be bothered, you know, they hold no interest to me. Uh, and then retire as early as I can, hopefully at 60, live on a property I own somewhere, whether it be on the coast or inland, and uh, drink fine wine and eat good foods until I die. Favourite form of exercise? Is walking. I, I love walking. I walk anywhere, you know, whether it's in the bush, along the beach, in the city. If you could change places with anyone in history, who would it be? That would have to be probably Zeppo Marx, the fourth Marx brother. He was in their first few films, but uh, I wouldn't want to be one of the Marx brothers, the main ones, Groucho, Chico, Harpo, because I'd, I'd want to watch them and, and be part of their tours and well, they used to tour the vaudeville circuit before they got into movies and uh, I'd love be you know one of them and, and watch them and, as they used to do their live shows which were apparently funnier than any films they used to do. The funniest joke you never wrote? Oh well, there's many but uh, one that springs to mind would have to be the UK comic Lee Evans I think it was had a joke where he said he lost his dog so he put an ad in the paper saying here boy. Now, this Facebook nonsense I've had that all my life. People will think it's been around two years. I've had a Facebook since I was born. It's called a photo album. <laughs> it's a book with my face in it all. So I once tried to put their face in it and I said, hey, that's my space. <laughs> my face. You get your name. Is you a confirmed atheist? Yes, I am. I, I hate all religions. I very much hate them. Any particular reason? I don't think they serve any purpose, you know. I think maybe when they started, they served a purpose, you know, to bring people together and, um, and uh, you know, even the Christian religion was a, a rebellion against, uh, you know, the powers that be in, in Rome at the time. I mean, pubs do that, though, don't they? Pubs bring people together. And then they bring them apart when they get outside yeah. Yeah. and they get the fresh air in or closing time. <laughs> Hanging around a pub culture, you obviously got to meet shady characters here and there, uh, and you do have an interest in crime. Is this where your interest in crime started to happen through people that you may have known? No, no, I, my interest in crime started from reading. Like I, I, I like reading, but I only like to read things that interest me, and uh, that's one of the few things that interest me. Like politics doesn't really interest me. I just see all politicians as uh, people who jockeyed into a position to get the most that they can for themselves. You know, country are run by uh, mafias basically that, um, that are out for themselves and their parties and uh, the crime interests come from just looking for something interesting to read and I, and I would read about people who committed crimes and, and their lives and think well they must have made at some point usually early on in their life uh, pivotal decision to um, you know lead that life even though they kn knew that their life could be shortened by numerous years or wasted in a cell for numerous years yet they still went ahead and decided to become bank robbers or extortionists. You think they're a sort of heroic? I don't see them as heroic at all it's just an interest to me because um, these people have uh, decided they're not going to live the nine to five. Um, I'm not talking about when I'm not into like serial killers or, or I have read about them, but it's not what interests me. I'm more interested in people who have made a, a decision in their life that, that crime is going to be their job. They're going to be bank robbers. They're going to be break and enter or safe crackers. Or so you like the more psychological part of the person figuring out why they've done that. Yeah, and also the psychological part, but also the the their technique and the way they've done it. I mean, you know, some of some of these guys are, are pretty clever guys. They could have had jobs uh, and made a lot of money doing other things. Use their power for good and not for evil. Exactly. Have you ever committed a crime yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Look, the 80s are coming back now, like uh, the fashions and all that. You could, you could have the same haircut the same clothes, it's the same music for 20 years and be cool once every 20 years. <laughs>
everything's the same. It's just they, they just add bullshit to it. Like going to the movies now. Ever since they brought in online booking and reserve seating, they try to make it more exciting. I go to the movies during the week in the middle of the day when there's no one there, and the girl who takes the ticket still says, "Would you like to sit in the middle?" And I get excited. Yeah, yeah, I would like to sit in the middle. I go in there. There's two other people in there. And I think, where does she mean in the middle of those other two people? <laughs> The word shark was invented in Australia by the first Aussie to see a shark. Close up. Combination of two words. <laughs> Shit! And fuck! Hi, I'm Vince Sorrenti. You can see me on Talking Comics with Daz and Gaz. I can't believe people in this country who win like six million dollars or something Lotto or Powerball and they're on the news sitting on a couch going when this six million dollars is going to change our life, we'll be going back to work on Monday. What the fuck did you go in it for? <laughs> That's the one thing you've been dreaming about every day at your mundane job in the warehouse. You should be popping champagne corks, dancing around the living room, using the news camera while it's there to make the big speech you've always fantasised about making. The following people can get fucked. Starting with your boss, and going right down to Jehovah's Witnesses. Get everyone in the room. Thanks for